Uh, Coach Cerrone, it was another early deficit and you guys were able to bounce back. Do you think last week's experience was a help for this week? I thought it was going to, but uh, we got down. I think they did a great job. They came out and uh, I think they outcoached us a little bit there, no doubt, for about at least a quarter and a half. Big plays. We normally don't give up big touchdowns like we did, and uh, we we were struggling, you know, single covering them, trying to get pressure. And uh, I think offensively we struggled a little bit too. And just coming out after halftime, I mean, we just talked about being, you know, doing being us, and these guys did a phenomenal job. Great second half, and I think we wore them down. I think that's the key to the game. Is defensively they were worn down, and offensively we just we just wore them down. And uh, that's a credit to these guys and how hard they work and how we practice this week. And I mean that was the ball game, just them physically being worn down. Uh, Ryan, what was your key on defense as far as their offense? What was your goal to stop them with? Oh, well, we always want to stop the run, and then. Uh, obviously, they hit those two big pass plays, so we didn't have to make the adjustments. And after a while, we, they couldn't run on us anymore, and then we just kept everything in front of us, and that was it. Nate, you're obviously not used to throwing interceptions, but did that bother you at all or make you more motivated for the second half? Uh, I guess you could say it. Uh, just one of those things that happened. I mean, they made good plays on the ball, and I just tried to stay, keep my head up, stay positive for the team, and uh, we just came out with that. Uh, up around in the second half. And Cole had 218 total yards and three more touchdowns a day. How do you feel about becoming one of the leaders of this team? Um, you know, I'm just doing my part here. There's a lot of playmakers, so obviously defense has got a plan for <coughs> Nate here, and also for Caleb Ross and you know everyone out there. And I just, you know, when I'm called upon, I try to do it again. Cole, you've been great all season, but especially these last five, six games over 200 yards today, why is that? You've been getting better as the game sort of rolled along, especially these last two weeks. Um, you know, I don't really know. I'll answer that because he's the best back in the league <laughs> by far. And he's, uh, you know, he's proved it, and I'm just glad we kept him healthy, and now you're seeing what he can really do. And uh, that's why we recruited him. Ryan, are you eating something different for breakfast these days? New champion. What's going on the last two weeks? Uh, actually, for breakfast, we always have these ham and turkey sandwiches. <laughs> I, I never eat them. <laughs> so maybe that's it. They're, they're terrible. So. But you stepped it up over the last two weeks. Anything? Is it more important these games? What exactly is going on? Um, well, obviously, it's more important because it's the playoffs, but it just it's another level. You guys got to turn it up for the playoffs, and I just want to win so bad. I'll tell you why, because he is one kid who he watches more film than any other guy we have on the defense. And, uh, you know, even from last year, we've designed the defense kind of around him to let him play play out there free. And uh, Frank Martin, you got to give a lot of credit to Frank because Frank is right behind him, and Frank kind of covers for him so Ryan can, you know, do what he does, make plays. And uh, today he had a phenomenal game. Great job, man. Ryan, talk about the interception before halftime. What was your read on the play and, and kind of how the play unfolded? Tell them the truth, end? Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I missed the call. I didn't know. I didn't know what's going on. Who's supposed to blitz? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to sit here and tell you that we're great coaches. We just have fun with it. He was supposed to blitz, and uh, he bailed out of the blitz, which which, which happens. But I mean, uh, that's just great coaching. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get the call, so we were kind of panicking, and then I just, I just read it was a pass, and he stared the guy down, and I was lucky enough to get over there and make the play. But, Pat, in a game where momentum is big, that really changed the entire scope Absolutely. of the ball game, didn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's how this game is. I mean, there's so many times, guys, that you're watching the game, and you think we, you know, we know what we're doing, and we don't. We do, we're just out there, and you got playmakers making plays. And you know, Nate Ware has done this a hundred thousand times. Cole Meyer, you got three guys sitting here that just make plays, and it don't matter what you call. 
it's the desire to win and uh, we're real fortunate we're very blessed right now as a football team and to be in this position I just uh, you know they they don't worry about things like that but I do I mean I just I just can't believe this is happening to us so you know now we're gonna fly out to Oregon as a team and this is one of their goals and we're playing a much better team again but it really doesn't matter right now we just we just like being it I love every Thursday listening to our seniors talk and tell you know tell me why I coach here every week and tell us the whole team how you know what what their word is for the week and we get to do it one more time and uh, fly on an airplane together and just be together and I think we're just gonna have fun with it we're pretty good too. So. Nate, how important was that opening drive of the third quarter? When you came out of halftime and you, you punched one in at the end of the half in the first and then to send a statement to tie things up? Uh, it was a big deal that we had. Uh, we talked uh, throughout the whole second quarter that we needed something big and we, we needed to score, but we came out there guns blazing. I mean, uh, we had a lot of great runs in there. Coaches had a lot of good play calls, a lot of good blocks that we had. Uh, we just need to uh, get some points on the board and uh, tie things up. Nate, on that drive, you had a scramble on a third and ten to pick up a key first down. Um, can you talk about using uh, using your legs to get a first down on that play to keep the drive going? Well, I noticed on that one, they, uh, throughout the film, they didn't send anyone, they didn't send anyone on a blitz. They all dropped back into coverage, and I saw the middle field wide open. So, I mean, coaches let me pick my, pick my opportunities, and that was just my opportunity to go. Nate, as a senior here, uh, trying to extend your career with every game. How important was it to have these last two at home? Oh, uh, it's a great feeling that we have. I mean, uh, you guys see our fans out there. It's a lot of support that we have. Everyone's coming, they're cheering. Uh, and also, even Thanksgiving, we have a lot of students coming back. Everyone just wants to be a, a part of this team. and uh, They're really behind us 100%. Coach, what do you think was really the turning point of the game? Do you think it was Ryan's interception, or was there a point where you really felt, you know, being down 14 nothing, the momentum switched back in your favor that led to, you know, the 37 unanswered points? I think the, the other two touchdowns was the turning point. Once we got the lead and then we had the two touchdown lead, that's kind of the, I think the turning point is when we just wore them down and that was it. You could kind of sense it. I'm sure you did in the crowd. Just I sensed it. I was like, wow, they... They, they just disappeared there, you know, in the third quarter, and uh, that's a great feeling, and it, that's a huge compliment to these players. I mean, D-line wise, they were coming off saying, "Coach, their old line's tired." I'm sure the old line was saying the same thing, were they not? I mean, and that's when we. This is what it's built for, you know. Our offense is built for this, you know. Nate Wera, Cole Myra, Caleb Voss, you know, Mitch Hintz. It don't matter. Whipper for it's built to run option down your throat, and then to you know, if we need to spread it out, we can. And defensively, you know, we gave up uncharacteristically two plays there. I mean, even the, the fourth down touchdown, I mean, that, that was on me all the way. So uh, I'm just glad these guys are in shape, and I'm glad they're sticking with the plan. I mean, it, they could have easily this week. We practiced a little bit longer than we had in the past, but the weather was nice, and they don't complain. They don't do anything, but uh, I think it's paid off. I think everything we've done so far as a team and – has just paid off and uh, you know we're in shape we're healthy we're good to go so let's do it again coach talk about Zach getting back into the lineup today and getting the interception there in the second quarter in the second half uh, to, to get another touchdown drive how nice was that for him uh, wet and Gill had the interception yeah wet and Gill. I didn't even know that so <laughs> I mean just just having him back uh, Zach is uh, has been out for four weeks and I mean, he's really Frank's, Frank Martin's a real good football player, but Frank likes to take chances, and Zach was always there in the first six games. And uh, when he was out now, you know, having him back is just like having, uh, you know, your quarterback back in the defensive secondary. And uh, he's a great player, and he's, you know, we're just, ex you know, I guess, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even know he had the pick, and great for him. What an awesome deal. Coach, you mentioned uh, toward the beginning that you might have gotten out coached right at the beginning. Absolutely. What was it about their game plan that surprised you, and how did you adjust to it in the second half? Well, we struggle when we're not a we we don't have the lead, you know, defensively. You know, it's not a mystery. Our our secondary is, you know, I mean, those receivers are pretty big. <laughs> 
And Tim Filter isn't very big, but he makes big plays. But he also, you know, he missed the tackle on the one that which got him down there. I mean, it's just our corners can't be put on islands all the time. And uh, this team forced us not to uh, play some defenses we have in the past because uh, they're a good run team. But as you as the stats show you, I mean, we did a pretty good job against the run, and that's what we practiced all week. We had to take that away. Play action passes were going to be the weakness for us today, and uh, because of the front, we had to play to stop the run. And uh, getting the lead allowed us to do some of the things we've done in the past, different coverages, and just can't leave Tim and Kyle alone out there. And That's really what happened. And they were alone, and we were trying to bring pressure and, you know, you know, just uncharacteristic, the guy to go 70 yards for a touchdown. I mean, that just hasn't happened all year. He ain't give up big plays. So. For Nate and Cole, what, uh, you know, during the regular season, you guys were always starting fast, you know, against Whitewater, against Platte. But the last two weeks, the offense really hasn't gotten going right out of the gates. Is there a reason, or, or what are your thoughts on that, and how do you change it uh, for next Saturday? Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's a preparation or focus, I think that, like Coach Cerrone said, is uh, we were a little out coach. I think we expected them to run a defense that they didn't run, and it, you know that's what our coaches do. They they figure out what they're doing, and we adjust. And you know you saw that today in the second half. So um, throughout the season, we play those teams all the time. So the coaches kind of know what they're going to run, and these are teams we've never seen before. So you know it takes a little test in the water before you jump in. This is definitely ground never covered by us. I mean, we're just literally taking it day by day. Tomorrow's another day, you know. I mean, now we're going to be getting on an airplane and flying. I mean, we just don't, we don't even know what we're doing. We're just doing it. And that's what kind of is neat. I hate to break that to you, but we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, for you, they went to a lot more option in the second half, and you know the one that stands out is the safety, obviously. But all day it seemed like you just sort of ate that up. Why were you able to defend that particular play so well? Um, a lot of times the receivers try to crack on me, and I just, to be honest, I'm just too fast. They can't do it. So I don't know why they kept trying, but <laughs> giving credit, they tried. Ryan and Coach. Um, Against Whitewater and against Lacrosse, we saw the third quarter was really a time when uh, the defense basically was their only slip up in the game when Whitewater had those 13 unanswered points against you guys. And then really last week and this week, it's been you know, a tale of two cities where you come out in the second half and don't allow any points the entire second half, whereas you allowed them in the first half. Is that something that you guys have been working on in practice, is coming out strong in the second half, or why has there been that turnaround from those games? Uh, you know, in the let, let me just say it this way. Maybe this has something to do with it. In conference play, we come out with only six minutes on the clock, okay, maybe four, four to five minutes on the clock. In the playoffs, you have to come out with over 10 minutes on the clock because they have to do their playoff thing. Um, we're not a team that likes to hang around and just stand there. You know, we're not a rah-rah team. We're not a, you know, I guess you guys have figured out we just don't, we're very unemotional. And that's kind of my, I guess I'm the reason for it because we just stay kind of even keel. When you have that 10 minutes to stand there, it's just not, you know, for the past 10 weeks we've come out with four minutes to go and, we're ready to go, but uh, we have to figure out a way here when we go down to Linfield to, to we got to figure out a way to get this going because we cannot do this anymore. And we we can talk about it all we want, but at least we won. So it is a different schedule and it does affect your team. I don't care what anybody says.